that's not even close to the right dimension. Welcome back to Cloud 42, I'm James. This week, we are continuing work on the Hemingway Sensitive Knurling Tool. I think we're finally through most of the millwork and it's time to make some parts on the lathe. We'll start with the brass nut and trunnion and hopefully we'll get to the screw today. Let's get started. The first part we're gonna start with is the brass nut. This is the part that has the threads for the adjustment screw and a couple of pivots to fit into the side plates. To turn this on the lathe, we're gonna use a collet stop. This one happens to be from Edge Technology, but you can even make these in the shop. The stop just threads into the internal threads on the back of the 5C collet and provides a positive registration for the part placed in the collet. This allows you to swap parts or to take the same part out and put it back in without losing the Z position you have programmed in your DRO. So I will start by just putting the part in the collet and taking a light facing cut to clean up one end. And now that we have that end cleaned up, we can flip it around and put that freshly faced surface against the collet stop, tighten it down again, and face off the other end. Now with both ends faced, we can measure the part and we can enter that length as the Z coordinate into the DRO. And with that done, we can just turn the part down to length using the numbers on the DRO as our guide. There's no need to stop and remeasure the part because we've already got the DRO calibrated. We can check and see where we ended up. It's supposed to be 9375, so we hit it within 5 tenths. That is really good. Normally I would trust this process down to a couple of thou just because you can get a little bit of variance depending on how tight you tighten the collet or if you swap in a part with a slightly different diameter, the collet will seat differently. But in general, within a couple thou, this works. Now we'll just turn down part way, take a measurement, and now we can set the X coordinate or the diameter into our DRO. And now we don't have to do any more measuring. We can just go right to our final diameter bring it all the way into our shoulder dimension and then just wind the tool out to face off the shoulder. Let's see what we hit. We're about half a thou under three eighths, which should be a perfect fit on a three eighths inch reamed hole. And that could not be any better. We'll just throw a chamfer on the end, pull the part out, flip it around and turn the same features on the other side. And of course, since the part is still the same length and it's still against the same stop, we can just drive to dimension with the DRO and there is no need to measure. And that fits just as well as the first side did. And while we could finish this part here on the lathe, I am too lazy to swap out the chuck, so let's just take this over to the mill. The nut needs flats milled on the top and on the bottom. And of course, there's no orientation yet, so we can just put it in here any way we like, as long as it's level front to back. And then we can touch off with a tool to establish a zero. And once we've found the zero point, I'll just put that in the DRO, and then we will raise the knee, the amount we need to take off, and just take it off in a couple of passes. In a soft material like brass with a sharp end mill, there's no reason you couldn't go directly to the final depth but I always like to take a shallow pass as the last pass just to have the best surface finish possible. Now that we have one flat established, we need to cut the flat on the other side parallel to this. So we'll go ahead and put some parallels in the vise, put the flat side down, and then grip it on the ends of the pivot bosses. Come down, find the zero point again and do exactly the same thing and take the same amount of material off the other side. Now we know the flats on both sides are parallel to one another and we are already set up in the correct orientation to put a hole through the center. We'll bring in an edge finder and locate on all four sides using the half function in the DRO to locate the center. Now we probably could just grab the tap drill and just push it through here, but I always like to spot drill first. And you note that I'm not using a center drill. A lot of people like to use a center drill for this and they get decent results, but I find that a 120 degree spotting drill does a better job. It establishes a cone that is just slightly wider than the 118 degree point on a standard drill. And that causes the tip to make contact first center up in the divot left by the spotting drill and start straight. 
Whereas if you use a center drill, you have the narrow point that the web of the drill will eventually follow, but the flutes of the drill hit first, and that can cause a little bit of side-to-side -side deflection and chatter. And so if I'm going to spot, I'm going to use a spotting drill. So we just ran the tapping size for 3 8 24 through here, and I'm just power tapping with a 3 8 24 spiral point tap. And this just goes right through the brass with no lubricant. And we'll take the tool out so we don't cut our hand on it and then take the part out and see how we did. There are some burrs raised around the tapped hole. So I'll just grab a rotary countersink and knock those off. And with that, I think this part is done. I've got a piece of 3 8 24 threaded rod here that fits easily. It's nice and tight, runs smoothly on the brass. So this one goes in the done pile. Next up is the trunnion. This is made from a piece of 5 8 brass, and it has a socket to hold the end of the pressure screw. It has some wings on the side that travel in the guide plates, and it has a couple of screws that lock it onto the end of the feed screw so that it can't fall out. We'll start by chucking up the piece of 5 8 brass in the lathe and taking a facing cut on the end. And that's pretty much all we can do here at the lathe. I'm going to try to do as much of the milling on this part as I possibly can in one setup in a 5C collet block. I have a stop on the vice jaw so that I can take the block out and put it back in in the same position, just rotated 90 degrees, and I am going to bring in a machinist jack to support the part from underneath. The collet is not gripping on very much stock because there wasn't very much stock provided in the kit, and the machinist jack is cheap insurance to make sure we don't push it out of parallel when we start drilling. Now I'll find the front and back with an edge finder, use the half function in the DRO to establish the Y0, and we'll establish our X0 on the end of the part that we faced off over at the lathe. To give myself the best chance of doing this without making any mistakes, I am going to move over to the position of the hole, and I'm going to reset the X0 in my DRO there. Start by spotting for the hole for the pocket to hold the end of the screw. And I'm just using that same 120 degree spotting drill, starting very gently to try to keep it from walking off the top of the cylinder. Once we have a good spot established, I will switch to a 3 8 inch drill to put in the pocket. I'll touch off on the top of the part. And I'm just checking the depth that I had planned to make sure that it really isn't going to break through. It looks good. So we'll move back to X0 and drill the hole to depth. Now this is a standard drill in brass. We're not breaking through, so I shouldn't need to worry about it grabbing. But if it's all the same to you, I'll take it nice and slow, especially since we don't have a very secure grip on this thing in the collet. Now the end of the screw is 3 8 of an inch, and that was a 3 8 inch drill, but it looks like the hole it drilled is about 4 thou oversized. This is a 379 pin fits pretty well. That should work great. Now with the collet block rotated 90 degrees, we can take an eighth inch end mill and start whittling away material to form the little wings on the sides of the trunnion that ride in the slots and the guide plates. I'm just going to take this in shallow cuts because it is such a small end mill. Probably could take a lot more than this, but I really don't want to snap this off. Now I am holding outboard of the final shoulder width and I'm going to whittle down to above what I think is the correct depth. And we'll go ahead and flip the collet block over and make the same cuts on the other side. The idea here is that we're just roughing this out and then we'll take some measurements and finish it to dimension. Now we should still be a little bit thick, but we can bring in a micrometer, measure it, see exactly how much too thick it is, drop the quill or raise the knee, and then come back and take the remaining material. That sound you heard was my air gun falling out of the hook onto the floor. And I just put it back and then did it again, so I guess I don't really learn. Now with this to width, it does seem to fit pretty well in the slot. 
So we'll move over to the other side of zero and make the same cuts on the other side of the part. At least that was the plan. Right about here is where I'm looking at this part thinking that doesn't look right. Scale doesn't lie. I cut the slot in the wrong spot. It must have just driven to the wrong coordinate and it's in the wrong spot. This part is scrap. Fortunately, I was able to find a bit of brass in my stock drawer, turn it down to the correct diameter, repeat all the operations you just watched, and we're ready to continue. Of course, this time I'll check with the scale when I'm setting it up initially, and yes, that looks like it's in the correct position. So we'll just repeat all those same operations. We'll just whittle this down bit by bit down to exactly the same depth that we determined was correct on the first side, and then flip it over and repeat the cuts on the other side. When slotting this deep with such a small end mill, a little bit of compressed air works wonders to keep the chips from packing up and snapping off the end mill. Now we should be to the correct depth, but not the correct width. So I'm gonna bring in a Unimic with a small anvil that will fit down in the slot we just cut. And this will allow me to take a precise measurement and see how much more material we have to remove. I'll just dial in half of that material on each side and we'll make a couple of passes to bring the center of the part to the correct width. I only left about 10 thou on there, so this is a really fine cut and this small carbide end mill has no trouble taking it without much deflection. You can measure again and see where we actually are. And we're about one thou under the nominal half inch dimension. That should be perfect for a nice sliding fit. Just flip it over and make exactly the same cuts on the other side. To sever the part from the parent stock, I'll just whittle the material away with a quarter inch end mill. The exact length of the little boss on the end is not critical. So I just dialed right to the dimension that I expected and I'll take half the material from one side, flip it over, and whittle the rest off of the other side, leaving a small web that I can just break off. Now I can just flip the part around, put it back in the collet, and I will go ahead and line this up with a square. It's not needed for this operation because we're just whittling the part down to length, but it will be needed to accurately locate the threaded hole for the lock screw. I'll turn this vertical and then center the spindle up on the diameter using a dial test indicator. And then once we've got the center located, I can dial the offset to where the hole should be and drill and tap it. I'll start with the same 120 degree spotting drill to establish a good spot and then push through with the tap drill. Now I am gonna go ahead and drill through both sides of the part the drill exit hole on the other side may not be perfect, but it'll be good enough for this application. Just go ahead and tap halfway through. I don't want to try to tap all the way through because the tap's not long enough. Flip the part over and then locate the hole with a pin. This is necessary because it may not be exactly in the correct position. The drill might have wandered when it went through the back side, but as I said, it's close enough. I'll just go ahead and power tap this with the same spiral point tap. And the machining on this part is done. We just need to do some deburring. Use a rotary countersink to clean up the threaded holes and a deburring blade to go around all of the other edges. That looks pretty good. It only took two tries. The next part we're gonna make is the screw, and you can see that the end of the screw has a chamfer that's at the correct angle to fit into the 118 degree drill point in the bottom of the hole in the trunnion. We'll start by checking up the 3 8 inch piece of free cutting mild steel that was included in the kit, and of course, we will begin by facing off the end. The drill we use to make the hole in the trunnion has a standard 118 degree point, which means we need a 59 degree chamfer. I've got 59 degrees worth of angle blocks here, and I'm just using them to align my 60 degree threading tool. I'll just push it slightly out of alignment in the tool holder. That should get us very close to the 59 degrees we need, and we can put the chamfer on the part and just see how it fits. Use plenty of oil on this because this is just a flat topped ground high speed steel tool. Run the lathe nice and slow and we'll just push it in until we have a good chamfer. 
We don't want to go all the way to a point because the drill web leaves a flat bottom spot in the hole and we definitely don't want to chamfer all the way down so that we make contact with that. We'll just clean up the chips and the cutting oil and see how it fits. Feels good, but the only way to tell for sure is with some marking compound. I'm just going to use blue Sharpie. Put some on the chamfer and then rub the trunnion on it and see how much transfers. And that's transferring just at the point. Most of it is not making contact, so that angle actually needs to be a little bit steeper. I just tapped the tool around in the holder and we'll touch the end here and move it a little bit and check it again. Pull it up, see where we are. That's a little bit better, but we're still not there yet. So I'll tap it a little bit further, make a pass, check it, tap it again, make a pass, check it until we get a transfer that I'm happy with. Now that's starting to look good. We're getting contact across a pretty broad area of the face. It's of course not perfect, but it's very close and I'm convinced that will wear in with time. I think we're good here. With the chamfer on the end done, now we need to put in the grooves for the retaining screws and the thread relief. The drawings actually have the dimensions for where the retaining screw groove should go, but I don't want to trust those. I want to actually mark it using the part itself. So I'll go ahead and put it on here, run the retaining screws in until they touch, spin it around and put some scratches in the screw that we can then use to locate the groove so that it will fit. Now those are nice and clear, so I'll just bring in the tool, pick those up and register this as zero in my DRO, move to the other side, see how wide it is, figure out where the center is, and then I'll go ahead and turn the groove as shown in the drawing but centered up on where those marks appeared in the screw. So I'll just use a 60 degree threading tool and I'll just keep feeding it in a little, working it back and forth to the dimension shown on the drawing until the groove is at depth and at the correct width. Now this is just a hand ground high speed steel threading tool, but it's just going like butter through this free cutting mild steel. And that should be the groove to depth and width. Clean up the chips and the oil here and give it a little test and make sure it fits properly. I'll just go ahead and run the screws down. The screws need to be below the surface of the boss and they need to be just about touching, but not quite dragging. And it looks like there's plenty of room for the screw. It's retained solidly and it spins freely. Can't really ask for more than that. With that done, we'll put in the thread relief. I'll just touch off a parting tool on the end of the part, dial over with the DRO and plunge in. The groove shown in the drawings is wider than my parting tool. So I'll plunge in on one side, plunge in on the other side, take both of those to depth and then just traverse across the bottom to clean it up. With that done, I'll just go ahead and take off the burrs and polish the surfaces with a Kraytex stick. If you haven't seen one of these, it's also sold under the name Bright Boy, and it's just a rubber bonded abrasive that you can use. It'll conform itself to the shape of the part. It's especially good for this kind of work and for polishing up threads. Now we just have to flip the screw around and thread it. This is gonna be a long stick out, so I definitely want some tail support. So I'll face it off to its final length and then come back with a small center drill and we'll put a center in the part. I'm just feeling the center drill to make sure it's not wobbling, make sure we did get a good spot and it is centered up. It doesn't need to be too deep. It doesn't need to be a big center. It just needs to be a center. Now pull this out, grab it by the end and bring in some tail support. You know, technically you really shouldn't cut the center in one setup and then move the part, but for a little screw like this, I'll totally get away with it. I'm using a solid carbide center because there just wasn't room for my live center to get the tool in close. And I am going to lubricate it with CMD extreme pressure lube. We'll get that all situated, blew up the part and take a scratch pass. Believe it or not, my electronic lead screw died this morning. It looks like it's just a motor failure. The motor's getting power. It's just not powering on. 
Uh, I need to get that fixed, but for now, I went ahead and swapped the change gears back into the lathe. It has been a long time since I've used change gears. You can see my tail support isn't in there quite right, so I'm probably turning a little bit of a taper here, but it's really minor and it's not going to matter at all. I am checking this with magnification, both because I'm blind and because I'm using change gears again, so I can't just trust the ELS. And now it's just a matter of bringing in the threading tool and just making pass after pass until we get to depth. Now I am feeding straight in because I don't have the compound on the lathe, but for such a small thread in free cutting mild steel, I don't expect any trouble. That said, this isn't going great. You know, it is cutting, it is making a thread. I do get it to dimension and the nut does fit, but the surface finish on the threads is not great. I've got some tearing. I'm not able to get the carbide tool that I normally use for threading in here in such close quarters, but the part's done. I'm a perfectionist, so I'm not ever going to be happy with anything, but this will work. The nut screws on, it'll adjust the knurling tool, and we'll see in a few weeks if it still bothers me. And if it does, I'll remake the part. But for now, this is good. Enough. That's the nut, trunnion, and screw complete. We're getting close. Next time, we'll tackle the heart of the tool, the eccentric cam assembly. If you're not subscribed, you might miss that, and that would be tragic. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and maybe consider supporting the channel over on Patreon. Patrons can download files for all of my projects and get a little sneak peek behind the scenes. Thank you for watching.